course for this next update is going to be Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer, Florida Governor Rick Scott, Attorney General Pam Bondi, Police Chief John Mina, Sheriff Jerry Demings, and Ron Hopper with the um, FBI. After this briefing, we will only have briefings as significant events occur for the rest of today, and we'll provide tomorrow additional updates. This is probably the most difficult day in the history of Orlando, and I want to thank all of our law enforcement professionals, our health professionals, victims, advocates, counselors um, who have come to the aid of our community. While it is difficult for all of us, it is the most difficult for those families that are still waiting for information on their loved ones. And as difficult as that is, I ask for patience and compassion and love. Pulse remains an active crime scene and law enforcement is working the scene as efficiently and as diligently as they possibly can while also being respectful of the remains of the deceased. We are setting up additional means of communication. We have the hotline, which is 407-246-4357 that we mentioned at the last press conference. And anybody that has a loved one that they believe could be one of the victims should contact that hotline and give their information so that we have contact information when we're able to identify your loved one. Aspire Health has offered counseling services and can be reached through the Zebra Coalition. And the LGBT Center on Mills is also open with grief counselors. We're setting up a website, which is cityoforlando.net backslash victims, which will be updated with the names of the deceased after the next of kin have been notified. You heard the president and the governor is here. We have all of the resources of the federal government, the state government, and our local government partners, all that they have to offer. Our community will be grieving today, the next few days, the next few weeks, and the next few months. We need to support each other. We need to love each other. And we will not be defined by a hateful shooter will be defined how we support and love each other. Governor Scott. Thank you, Budget. Thank you Mayor Dyer. <clears throat> well, clearly this is an act of terrorism. This, um, you just can't imagine this happening in any community. Uh, you can't imagine it happening in your state, if you're the governor of a state, and you can't imagine it happening in your country. I want to first, uh, my heart goes out to every family member that's been impacted. I know law enforcement is doing everything they can uh, to notify next of kin, uh, get as much information out as they can, uh, and, and they're working very diligently together, state, local, and federal. Uh, I want to, uh, I, I, uh, I want to thank all of our law enforcement for everything they do, they've done in this case and each and every day. I'd ask for all the citizens of the United States to have a moment of silence at 6 p.m. Eastern Time tonight to. Um, to mourn uh, the loss of life and still, and also pray for those that are still fighting uh, for their life uh, and pray for all the loved ones. Uh, again, I want to thank the law enforcement, especially the, those that walked into that, that shooting scene uh, and risked their life to save so many people. This state is going to be defined as a state of generosity, a state of love. Um, we are a resilient state. Uh, we love people in our state and we're going to continue to do that. Anybody that's thinking about doing something like this in our state, our, um, our justice is swift, our penalties are severe. We have a great law enforcement team and we're gonna do the right thing. We, we declared a state of emergency earlier today for Orange County and the state, I know the federal government's doing the same thing, provide all the services anybody needs. Now I'd like to turn over to uh, the Attorney General, Pam Bondi. Today is a tragic day. And we are making it clear, anyone who attacks our LGBT community, anyone who attacks anyone in our state will be gone after with, to the fullest extent of the law. 
today. My office has been working. We've been bringing in victims' advocates from throughout the state of Florida here to Orlando. So if you're missing a family member, a loved one, we will be here to help you. Um, you're hearing on a horrible, tragic, violent day the word love, and that's what we need to continue to do. We need to look out for each other. We need to take care of each other, and we will be available as a community, as a state. And I, we've all received calls from around the country of people offering their support in this horrible, horrible time. Um, our mayor's done an incredible job. The FBI has now taken the lead on this investigation, and they are remarkable. Back in the command center, watching federal, state, and local law enforcement and prosecutors all work together, second to none in our state. And we should be very proud of the law enforcement, the men and women in uniform who are all working together as a team. Thank you very much. And now the FBI. I'm sorry, our police chief. Good afternoon. Just to clarify, we had 11 Orlando police officers uh, that exchanged gunfire with the suspect and killed him. Uh, they have all been relieved of duty, as is our standard practice. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement will investigate the officer-involved shooting portion of that, and we will release their names um, over the next couple of days. We want the citizens and residents and visitors of Orlando to know that we are committed to their safety. Our officers put themselves in harm's way and risk their lives for the people and patrons at Pulse, and we are committed to do so again. So at this time, we're going to uh, continue with the investigation, assist the FBI. Our focus is on helping with the identification and next to kin, and we're setting up a system uh, for that as well. I also want to take this opportunity to thank all of uh, the outpouring of support, not only from local law enforcement. Uh, you know, we've had uh, multiple sheriffs from different counties uh, respond, uh, different police chiefs. Everyone in Central Florida has reached out to us. But also, I want to thank the uh, businesses in this area. They have all stepped forward to assist uh, law enforcement with food, with water. Uh, so uh, we really do appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. Just going to provide a, a brief update as well. Um, this has certainly been a trying day. As you can see, as the day has grown, the level of support in our community has grown as well. And so I sincerely appreciate uh, the broad support that we are receiving. We still have a lot of work to do yet in this investigation. Uh, at uh, just after noon today, uh, there was a national phone uh, teleconference that was uh, spearheaded by the Department of Homeland Security, in which law enforcement from in, across the uh, entire country came together to talk about what we must do to ensure the safety of our homeland. Because what has happened here uh, was not purely an attack on the residents of Florida or the residents of Orange County or Orlando here, but this was indeed an attack on our nation. And so we appreciate the support that is coming from across the country in this effort. In terms of the Orange County Sheriff's Office, uh, we had three deputy sheriffs who were actively engaged in the rescue efforts that also fired their weapons. They, too, have been uh, relieved of the law enforcement uh, authority pending an investigation. What we typically do here in Orlando is call upon the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to do an independent investigation of any law enforcement officer involved shootings, and that has been done in this case. And so they will be doing their investigation concurrently with that uh, of the uh, FBI. Uh, thank you again. Thank you, Sheriff. Just to reiterate, the FBI has taken the lead in this investigation, but I want to thank every agency standing behind me and those that you may or may not see currently that are working with us shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, to work get to the bottom of this uh, senseless act of violence. I prepared some talking points to make sure I address all the questions that you posed earlier, so bear with me as I go through them. We're gathering a lot of information right now, so we want to share as much as we possibly can. The individual believed to be responsible for the terror attack at the Orlando Club Pulse early Sunday morning has been identified as Omar Mir Sadiq Martin, age 29, an American citizen born in New York. He died of an exchange of gunfire with police officers early this morning. 
The FBI first became aware of Martine in 2013 when he made inflammatory comments to co-workers alleging possible terrorist ties. The FBI thoroughly investigated the matter, including interviews of witnesses, physical surveillance, and records checks. In the course of the investigation, Mateen was interviewed twice. Ultimately, we were unable to verify the substance of his comments, and the investigation was closed. In 2014, Mateen again came to the attention of the FBI because of possible ties to Monar Abu Salah, an American suicide bomber. The FBI conducted an investigation, including an interview with Mateen. We determined that contact was minimal and did not constitute a substantive relationship or a threat at that time. It has been reported that Mateen made calls to 911 this morning in which he stated his allegiance to the leader of the Islamic State. We are looking into any and all connections, both domestic and international. We're going to be as transparent as possible. But we also want to be as accurate as possible, as I stated earlier today. Given the ongoing nature of the investigation, we'll continue to provide updates when information becomes available. Thank you. Does that mean the 911 report is inaccurate at this point? There were 911 calls in which there was conversation between the subject and uh, law enforcement representatives of 911 dispatchers. Uh, that has become federal evidence. It was, it was, uh, as my, it's my understanding, I have not personally listened to him, but it was general to the Islamic State. Have there been more in the hospital is under heavy guard right now. Can you confirm that? Could there be a second suspect here? I'm sorry, I missed it. I am hearing that there is somebody that's in the hospital under close guard by law enforcement. Is that true? And could there be a second suspect that acted with this man? I can tell you at this point in time, we do not have a second suspect that we are actively looking for. We don't know of any credible or singular threats that are uh, facing the Orlando area or nationally. Uh, we are providing uh, physical uh, presence for the hospitals and the victim assistance centers to make sure everyone remains safe special and secure. Agent, Sir, can he was this to be a of, quite um, special agent of an overview of what the inside of the post looks like? Were there victims found on the second floor? Did the shooter move around? All I can tell you is that crime scene is still being processed, and I, I can't comment on anything yeah, going on with the interior. Shots were fired. Sir. Special Agent, he was interviewed twice by the FBI in 2013, interviewed again in 2014 for connection to a known terror uh, terrorist, a suicide bomber. How in the world did this guy get a statewide gun permit? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, those interviews turned out to be inconclusive, so there was nothing to keep the investigation going when forward. But you had the echoes of terror, and he got a gun permit nevertheless. Again, the investigation was closer. Was he currently under surveillance? Have there been more victims that have passed since our last update? Uh, do we have someone from the medical side that can speak to that? I am not personally aware of any other uh, victims that have passed so since the last press conference. Have family members been notified of the, of the bodies that are in, inside? Have we you are, been able to identify them all? Have you notified their family? So we are trying to be as respectful as possible of the deceased people that still remain inside the facility. As we identify people, uh, we are making notifications. And then the uh, police department and the, I think, believe the city are preparing a website to list those that uh, have, have been made contact with. Any idea how many have been contacted at this point? From, uh, from the hospital's perspective, at least at least six that I know of next of kin had been notified uh, that their loved ones have. Uh, Jesus, 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 you know we're danger inside of this club still for for your agents and the FBI and, and the people investigating this crime. Is there still no danger? No, the scene the scene is clear. Uh, but like uh, especially uh, Hopper said, uh, there's a lot of victims inside trying to be respectful for of that as well. And it's just gonna it's just gonna take time. We ask that people have patience. The, sub, the subject that I mentioned earlier was not under current investigation at the time of this incident and was not under surveillance. Can you tell us what his family, you guys have interviewed his family, I assume. Is there anything you can tell us about those interviews? All I can tell you is that multiple uh, interviews are being conducted as we speak. I have no details as to how far that's gone at this at point home? in time. You guys are at his home. So can you tell us what you're doing at the home? Uh, interviews and investigation, yes, sir. We're going to take two more questions. questions. Oh, you you are they entering the nightclub? Any word on where he got the weapons from? Has ATF been able to trace them yet? Is ATF here? ATF is here. Yes, our partners with, from ATF are here to speak to that. 
Hi, good day. I'm Trevor Vellon. I'm the assistant special agent in charge of ATF. And uh, first, I'd like to start by saying that our condolence goes out to the family of those who've been impacted. Yes, ATF has traced those firearms. Um, we know that this individual did purchase at least two firearms. He is not a prohibited person, so he can legally walk into a gun dealership and acquire and purchase firearms. He did so, and he did so within the last week or so. And um, thus far, we're following up on that, so I'm not going to get into the detail as to the specific location of the purchase, but he did purchase two firearms, a handgun, and a long gun within the last few days. What was the suspect wearing? That's all the information we can release at this time. We'll provide you more updates as they become available.